Hello everyone. So today we're going to practice on Desmos, but more specifically we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be manipulating our linear equations in order to create shapes. And this is going to lead us into what the assignment is today. So first off you're going to go to desmos.com. You guys are all familiar with this. Click on the big red button, start graphing. Okay, from here, before you do anything, <clears throat> you want to be able to save your work. So you're going to sign in. Sign in with Google, your Google account. You should have your name in the upper right-hand corner. In your case, it might have your student ID. Now we're going to name this something. And let's name this... In your case, it's going to be something else, and I'll tell you what that is later. But this is just going to be um, linear equation. Okay. This way you can save at any time. So we're going to show just a basic equation. Y equals X. This is a simple, basic linear equation. And I know I'm always telling you guys to go to projector mode. So it's better lines. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to show that same line, but we're going to move it up or down, okay? Y equals X, same thing, but now we're going to do, how can we move it up the Y axis here? Is it plus or minus? Plus, right? Plus, oops, plus mm, three. There it is. And we're going to do another line below it. X. If plus 3 moved us up here, then minus 3 will move us down here. Minus 3. And we're going to keep them different colors just so you can kind of see here. Okay. So, the big thing in this is being able to limit the length of the function. So, in simple words, being able to shorten up the function. Okay? So, let's start off with our red function here, y equals x. Let's say we want to shorten it up so that it stops right here at negative 2. So, it'll stop right there. And then it stops at positive 2. Right there. So the way we do that is with inequalities, and that's what chapter 7 is about. And um, we, want it, we want x, because this is the x-axis, we want x to be in between negative 2 and 2. Okay? And let's try it. So I'm going to use these special brackets. And the way I like to do it is I put the variable that I'm limiting first. So since I'm limiting the x-axis, I'm gonna put the variable x. It disappears. Oh no. And eh, not a big deal. Inequalities. I always put them in the same direction, okay? These are just little tips that will um, keep you consistent across. Now we said we wanted negative two and two. So let's just try it. If it disappeared, who cares? We can just delete it and start over. Two negative 2. Oh, perfect. This is a perfect example of something not working. Hey, why didn't it work? Oh, I'm sorry, I did it wrong. See what I did? This is a good example. I did 2 and negative 2. It doesn't go in that order. Negative 2 is supposed to be first because we're thinking from left to right. Negative 2 should be first. Okay, so this is saying that x is greater than 2, but less than negative 2. That doesn't make sense. So let's just switch it. Ah, there it is. Perfect. See how I did this? Uh, these brackets? And I have x in the middle because I want to limit on the x-axis. And it's between negative 2 and 2. Negative 2 and 2. Okay, so let's try the next one, and we'll 
negative 4 and 3. How about that? Same thing, we're going to do the brackets. We're going to put x in the middle, our inequalities, and we want it between, we said negative 4 and 3. Negative 4 and 3. Whoa, let's zoom out a little bit. And there it is. There's our blue function. See how it's limited? Okay, and again, we can always switch these. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 12. You can switch it any way you want. Okay, this will help you when like creating shapes and stuff. And the last one. You know what, for this one, let's see if we can switch up the, um, according to the y-axis. And the best way is to just try it. Y, we're going to follow the same uh, inequalities. Let's just say negative 8 to 7. Huh. So what that did is it, said it went, according to the y-axis, this is for the, excuse me, for the green function. Green function. What it did is it's now looking at the y-axis right here. And it said, okay, we're going to limit our function from negative 8, which is right here, negative 8, all the way to 7. Go up to 7, so right here. Yeah, 7. So this is the y values, which is different from x. See, x is up to 10, and we don't even have 10. So it's, it's a little different. Okay, so this is how you change your graphs, and let's do one more. Whoop, didn't want to do that. Okay, I'm just going to start with the basic function. Y equals, um, actually, let's do um, a cool one. Let's do a square. I'm just going to write square right there. And let's do X equals... Okay, we saw this, and you can play with the sliders and stuff like that. See, this is cool. I actually didn't even know you can do this. But what we can do is we can move it around this way. And we'll leave it at 3. But what if we do... Um, actually, I think that's the only way you can move it. Oh, okay, let's limit it. And again... If we know x, and let's go back to it, let's get rid of this, let's move it somewhere out of the way. Let's move it right here, okay? So if we know x equals 8, that means that 8, negative 8 here, it's all of these values right here for y. You go here, negative 4. You go here, negative 8. You go here, it's 6. Okay, so what we want to do is limit uh, limit how far x equals uh, negative 8 or this function, how far it goes. We want to make it like into compact lines like these here, okay? And again, we're going to do our brackets. And this time, instead of doing x in the middle, how we did here, we're going to do y, okay? So y, we're going to do our brackets. And let's do negative 6 to 6. Negative 6 to 6. And there it is. Okay. Now, what happens if I put x here? Undefined. Can't do it. So just put y back. Again, you're going to have issues and you're going to have problems. Your functions are not going to show up. Follow this guide, and um, hopefully it'll help guide you through. And remember, just um, if something doesn't work, you can always start over. It's not the end of the world. So I hope this um, gives you enough information to guide you through what we're going to do today. And um, again, we're just going to be moving around. I'll do one more.
And this time I'll do y equals 2. Okay, cool. And we can move this up or down. Let's move this one to negative 10. Okay? And let's limit this one as well. Actually, let's be strategic here and let's line this up with the orange function. Okay? So I'm going to line it up. Go up there and now I want to limit it I'm gonna make a little box so X we need to limit it on the x-axis needs to be negative 8 and let's just say to 8 X negative 8 to 8 perfect and there's an L. Okay. Now we can take another function just like the um, the one we just made. This one here. We're gonna copy it almost. Negative six. We're gonna move it up. And we're gonna limit it. Again, negative. 8, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not even following my own rules. x, x, negative 8 to 8. Bam. And now we're kind of forming a little box. And if we keep them all the same color, and the way you change colors is up here. Edit list. Uh, let's make it blue. 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 Okay. And we're making a little box. See that? Oh, a square, I'm sorry. The correct term is square. And a square has all sides even, so it's actually not that accurate. As you can tell, I made this spur of the moment. I wasn't planning on making the square yet. But um, hopefully, you've seen enough to be able to manipulate your equations. And the most important thing you can do, save. OK? So this way, if, if you don't have enough time, you have to go back, you have to leave, whatever, you can always log back in, and your stuff will be here. See, I have stuff from who knows when. Okay? So I hope this answers your questions, and that's it. See ya.